Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past, and more. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of a the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Benjamin Franklin's basement filled with skeletons. Repairs on Franklin's old London house turned up 1,200 pieces of bone from at least 15 people. For nearly two decades leading up to the signing of the Declaration of Independence, Benjamin Franklin lived in London in a house at 36 Craven Street. In 1776, Franklin left his English home to come back to America. More than 200 years later, 15 bodies were found in the basement, buried in a secret windowless room beneath the garden. In 1998, conservationists were doing repairs on 36 Craven, looking to turn Franklin's old haunt into a museum. From a one meter wide, one meter deep pit, over 1200 pieces of bone were retrieved, remnants of more than a dozen bodies, says Benjamin Franklin House. Six were children. Forensic investigations showed that the bones dated to Franklin's day. Franklin was a noted revolutionary and powerful Freemason, the Grand Master of Masons of Pennsylvania, so, it's easy to wonder what dark secrets Franklin may have hidden in his basement chamber. The most plausible explanation is not mass murder, but an anatomy school run by Benjamin Franklin's young friend and protege, William Hewson, said The Guardian in 2003. Still, in Franklin's time, anatomy lessons were a dark ethically ambiguous business. Anatomy was still in its infancy, but the day's social and ethical mores frowned upon it. A steady supply of human bodies was hard to come by legally, so, Hewson, Hunter, and the field's other pioneers, had to turn to grave robbing, either paying professional resurrection men to procure cadavers, or digging them up themselves, to get their hands on specimens. Researchers think that 36 Craven was an irresistible spot for Hewson to establish his own anatomy lab. The tenant was a trusted friend, the landlady was his mother-in-law, and he was flanked by convenient sources for corpses. Bodies could be smuggled from graveyards and delivered to the wharf at one end of the street, or snatched from the gallows at the other end. When he was done with them, Hewson simply buried whatever was left of the bodies in the basement, rather than sneak them out for disposal elsewhere, and risk getting caught and prosecuted for dissection and grave robbing. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Ancient Giants of Russia The ancient giants of Russia aren't discussed much in the West, which has been blatantly anti-Russian for longer than most can even remember. But the Russian people and their culture are ancient. With new findings emerging through the frozen landscapes and a booming economy that's lifted most of its citizens out from underneath the communist rat hole two decades ago, modern Russia has recently been eager to give up her secrets. An incredible discovery made there in 2014 threatens to overturn the conventional mainstream theories concerning the history of the world. In the frozen tundra of southern Siberia, high on Mount Shoria, researchers found a series of megalithic stones that were assembled into a massive wall. Some of these gigantic stones weigh over 3,000 tons, boggling the mind when one thinks of how they could have been transported up the side of a rugged mountain and then stacked nearly 50 feet in the air. 
Some of the stones even appear to have been machine drilled, and perhaps cut or sawed, to reveal sharpened corners, flat smooth surfaces, and right angles. These megalithic wonders of Russia easily blow away their closest competitors in the category of out-of-place mega stoneworks that can be found in the quarries of Cairo and at the ruins in Baalbek, Lebanon. These Russian megalithic stones are over twice as big, they also displayed a very unusual trait that caused the compasses of local researchers to malfunction. Archaeologist John Jensen first broke the story to Western audiences via his blog hosted by Academia.edu. The super megaliths were found and photographed for the first time by Georgi Sidorov on a recent expedition to the southern Siberian mountains. The following images are from Valery Yuvarov's Russian website. There are no measurements given, but from the scale depicted by the human figures, these megaliths are much larger, as much as two to three times larger than the largest known megaliths in the world. Example. The pregnant woman stone of Baalbek, Lebanon, weighs in at approximately 1,260 ton. Some of these megaliths could easily weigh upward of 3,000 to 4,000 tons. There is little commentary on Valerie's site, so the images are displayed here without much comment, other than my own limited observations. Another ancient site in Russia is Arkham, also known as Russia's Stonehenge, despite not having any gigantic stone standing guard over the area. The ancient site is best seen from the air, as it looks like whatever used to be there disappeared a long time ago. Like other ancient sites, Russia's Stonehenge is in perfect alignment to be used as a solar calendar, with observations including sunsets and sunrises on the days of equinox and solstice, as well as sunsets and sunrises during low and high moon. Adding more intrigue to this ancient and mysterious site was the discovery of an elongated skull in the vicinity. Researcher Maria Makirova announced the discovery to the Russian news agency TASS, explaining the elongated skull belonged to a female member of the indigenous Armadi tribe, who lived at the time in what is now central Russia. The ancient remains have left archaeologists too stunned to explain what an elongated skull is doing all the way in Chelyabinsk, a Russian city on the northeastern tip of the Ural Mountains. The typical answers were given of course, to explain the elongated skull, the head binding of a child's skull, as per the tradition of the tribe. Never mind who these tribe members were trying to imitate in the first place. The Sarmati tribes were Bronze Age warriors. It is claimed that they have left behind the various mounds that litter southern Russia. These mounds are called Kurgans, and they share spooky similarities with other mounds found all over the world, including the mounds that once dominated the Midwest region of the United States of America. Some Kurgan mounds, estimated to be over 2,500 years old, were recently excavated in Kazakhstan. They revealed the burial sites of several skeletons averaging more than 7 feet in height. What do you think? What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.